Okay, so this is going to be the last section that we will cover for this unit. Um, this is going to be an area of a triangle. So in the past, we've done area of a triangle by just using the formula 1 half base times height. But the formulas that we're going to use today are when we have combinations of side lengths and angles where we don't necessarily have a base or a height. Okay? So the first formula that we're going to use, so just for our standard triangle, the area is going to equal 1 half AB multiplied by the sine of angle C. So if we have side lengths A and B, angle C is the angle that is between those two side lengths. Now you don't specifically have to just have A and B. You could have, for example, B and C, in which case you would use angle A. You could have A and C, in which case you would use angle B. So we need two side lengths and then we need the angle that is between those two sides. Okay? So looking at this example that we have here, we have 11 and 15, and then between those two, we have the angle 68 degrees. So, to figure this out, we're going to use our area formula that we have here. So the area is going to be 1 half multiplied by our two sides, so multiplied by 11 and by 15, and by the sine of the angle between them, so multiplied by the sine of 68. Now we just take this entire thing and plug it into the calculator, just like how we see it. So you're going to do 1 divided by 2 times 11 times 15 times the sine of 68. So if you plug this into your calculator, the area is going to be 76.49. And so that is what our answer is going to be for this one. Okay. Now, I don't believe that you should see any of these in your homework, but if it's the case that you have a combination of angles and side lengths where you don't have the two sides with the angle between them, Generally speaking, you're going to end up using the law of sines to solve for either your missing side or your missing angle so that you can use the area. But like I said, if I remember correctly on your homework, every single one of them should be able to be solved like this. Okay? Okay, so the second formula that we're going to use is if we do not have any angle measurements, if we just have the three side lengths. So this is a formula that we call Heron's formula. So the area that we are going to use is written right here. So the area is going to equal the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. A, B, and C are your three side lengths of the triangle. And then S, which is written right here, you take your three side lengths, add them together, and divide by two. So you're going to get your value of S first, plug it into the formula, and then the rest goes right into the calculator. The formula looks longer than the previous one, but once again, this is all just going to be calculator work. So the calculators can do all the hard work for us. So we have this triangle here where we have all three of your side lengths. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate S. So for S, we're going to take all three of the sides, add them together, and then divide that by two. So we'll take seven, 14.1, and 15, we add all of those together and divide that by 2, and we plug that into the calculator, and that is going to give us 18.05. So that's our value of S. Now, to figure out the area, we're going to plug everything into this formula that we see here. So we start with the square root of S, which is 18.05, times S minus A. So we don't have any of the side lengths labeled, but it really doesn't matter which order you do these in. So I'll just call these sides A, B, and C. But like I said, since we're gonna be multiplying all this through anyway, which ones you pick as A, B, and C really do not matter at all. So we'll do S minus A, so that will be 18.05 minus seven, and then S minus B, so 18.05 minus, I'm really good at root. I'm actually just going to rewrite it underneath. So we'll do the square root of 18.05, 18.05 minus 7, 18.05 minus b, which we said b was 14.1, and then multiplied by s minus c, so 18.05 minus 15. Now you're going to take this and plug it into the calculator, once again, just like how you see it. So you'll do the square root, and then you'll do 18.05 
parentheses, 18.05 minus 7, close the parentheses, parentheses, 18.05 uh, minus 14.1, close the parentheses, and then parentheses, 18.05 minus 15. You plug all of that into the calculator, and for this one, that is going to give you an answer of 49.02. And so that is what the area of the triangle will be. Now, there are other ways that we could compute the area when we have all three side lengths. So thinking back to what we did with the law of cosines, since we have all three side lengths, we could use the law of cosines to calculate one of the angle measurements. It would not matter which one we picked. From there, since we would have sides and an angle, we could then use that first formula that we use for area of a triangle. So for example, we could use the, say we use the law of cosines to calculate angle C, this one up here at the top. We would then do 1 half times 7 times 14.1 times the sine of whatever that angle is, and that would give us the 49.02. Similarly, if we did angle A, we would do 1 half times 15 times 14.1 times the sine of angle A. Or if we calculated angle B, 1 half times 7 times 15 times the sine of angle B. So the way that you do this really doesn't matter. This way just allows us to use one formula um, to solve for the area rather than having to do multiple things together. Um, but it's completely up to you. So I hope that these two examples made sense. If you have any questions on any of your homework, please feel free to reach out.